when, when Steve and I were talking about me doing a presentation on social media, I, I came up with as many questions as I came up with, you know, answers to the, the problems that are facing us now. And, and one of the reasons that I, I feel this is such a challenging issue for me right now is I work at a foundation that is comprised of developers that by and large are experiencing open source for the first time in their career. And these are professional developers, you know, very strong on process, very good coders, but they don't understand the culture of open source. And they're not going to read a book. And so what's happened is they're jumping in feet first, um, making mistakes, uh, and, and, and struggling with how to engage with people like yourself, that this is part of your DNA. And, and they don't know how to make that leap. Uh, and, and as I said, they've stumbled a few times. And because some of these guys work for Microsoft, actually about 40% of the 300 developers I work with are employed by Microsoft, Anytime they go off the deep end, it, they get the whole roaring Microsoft uh, baggage back at them. And what's, what's also interesting is, is I started working with a lot of college kids, or kids, guys that have just come out of college, and, and sadly, most of them are guys. And uh, they don't have a filter. And you know, a lot of college kids don't. They're tweeting, they're doing whatever they want to do with all these social media, to tool, media tools, and they're forgetting that Oh yeah, I work for someone now. I gotta watch that. Uh, so, so this presentation is more about getting feedback because what I'm going to be starting is a wiki here soon to talk about this issue of how can developers engage their community and their potential adopters, some of which may be paying customers, in uh, provocative ways, but not in ways that um, alienate the people they're trying to reach. So, my observation uh, after these couple of days is that developers like beer, they like data, <laughs> but they don't like bullets. No. So I promise you that you're getting one out of these, <laughs> three, three of these things in this presentation. And you can guess which one. So, you know, when I started, when I put together the title of this presentation, I was, I was thinking about this concept of there's zealots and there's pundits. There's these religious, zealous people throughout our industry. Um, and in some, some ways, it's great. And, it, you know, it's, it's like your own religion. If you're a religious person and someone's zealous and hyped up about your religion, that person's great. But if you're not, uh, and you come from another uh, set of norms, it can be very offensive. And so I think that's, that's one of the things that, that we really need to check ourselves. You guys are, are examples out there in the industry that can set the tone and and really raise the bar for those kids kids and new developers that are coming into into this into this socially media charged atmosphere. I also thought it was interesting here. A learned man. <laughs> We've got to do something about Miriam Miriam Webster. But um, you know I think the, the, the big point here was is you've got religion and you've got knowledge. And I really really want to encourage people taking on passion around what they know about rather than what they feel about. So uh, we'll, we'll continue on. And, and it, you know, as I said, there's a fine line because in this room, we can joke about a lot of things. Uh, as we go broader and people are watching us from the periphery, things can, can be taken out of context very, very quickly. And, you know, when there's passion involved, it's hard to find that fine line. Steve, the slides for you. <laughs> Yesterday, Eric, he, uh, oh, oh, yeah. he was flying home. Bye, buddy. But, yeah, so, so and it, <laughs> any Red Sox fan knows it's really, really hard to control your passion when you're this emotionally uh, involved with a situation. Uh, yet we, we, we continually forget the most basic of lessons at what, you know, and I was, I was doing some research on this the last couple of days. There's no, it's like, who ever said this? It was, a, it was our mother, you know, perhaps. I don't know. But, you know, consistent, you can read like 50 articles right now on the web, what things not to talk about at the office. And yet, we're doing it <coughs> all the time. We're talking about, I mean, how can you not talk about politics this, during, during this week? But, um, 
it, it, it's, it's important to remind yourself of this because of, of the fact that while it works within a, a confined community and it works while we're having beer at dinner last night, uh, it, it sometimes doesn't work with the community you're trying to reach. And we don't have offices anymore. So what's happened is Twitter and Facebook and all these other tech tools that we're using have become our virtual water coolers. And I, 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 I couldn't live without them, frankly. I, I work all day long in an office by myself, and I keep in touch with my friends and my colleagues in, in, in the industry using those tools. So, I mean, I'm as guilty as anyone of, uh, of chattering and twittering about this. The one thing I do, and I'd be curious about your feedback on this, I have two Twitter handles. So I have dual identity. I have Outer Curve, and I have Hunter Market. And you're, you're shaking your head. But what I don't want to do is invoke my politics or my religion or my passions into my, co my brand, my company brand. Uh, it's tough. I'm a two-headed monster all the time. Um, but I, 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 you know, I had to even do that with one of my employees who was very passionate about politics. You know, fortunately, the same party that I'm, I'm on, but I could see how he could easily offend a number of people through his tweets. Uh, so I said, hey, you want I, knock yourself out. Do it all you like. But maybe you want to have another handle for the stuff that really promotes But the reason uh, you're doing that is because you're ignoring the fact that you shouldn't talk about it. Yes. Well, if I'm tweeting under Hunter Market, I'm not in the office. If I'm tweeting at, at Outer <laughs> Curve, I'm, I'm, not, I'm in the office. That's what I'm saying. The only reason you need it is because you're talking about it all the time. Yeah. Well, not, not all the time, but I, I mean, what I don't want to, what I guess what I'm saying is, I don't want to squelch people's opinions and ideas and passions by any stretch of imagination. What I'm trying to do is find balance between having that voice with my friends and colleagues that know me and have context for me versus uh, people that are looking at <coughs> outer curve and saying, well, wait a minute, I thought they were trying to help developers, uh, you know, bring new open source code into the marketplace, what the hell are they talking about? You know, Romney and Romney well, and what, what if Romney. though, I mean, the thing is, it, what, you, you've got a case where your professional handle is actually your organization's yeah. Yeah. handle, which is, I think, a little bit different yeah. from yeah. you using your own name, but if I use my own name, if I make comments, certainly in the technology space, those are not divorced from my employer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just doesn't work that way. Right, right. No, I mean, I don't know that. I don't know that, that there is uh, one possible fix to it. Uh, yeah, I, I happen to have Outer Curve, but I could have easily have said Paula at Outer, you know, at Paula at Outer Curve, whatever. Um, the point is, is that I'm making a very specific distinction of when I'm talking about uh, my my company's opinions versus my personal opinions. And again, if I'm trying to attract developers, I'm trying to attract corporate sponsors, I'm trying to attract uh, people that might be more socially conservative than I, what I don't want to do is commingle those those identities. It's, it's, a, it's a, definitely a challenge. But I think that the, the context here is, is there, does it make sense to be using these channels for these discussions? And I thought that was what, just like you said, here we can make comments within this room, we can all understand the context gets outside of this room, it might be misconstrued. Right. Same way you wouldn't, I mean, if you blast something out on Twitter about politics, religion, whatever, is that not akin, it's a bit of a stretch, but just standing on the street corner and, and yelling your politics, religion. In other words, you don't know where it's going. It's not a focused chat. Right, right. So, I mean, I just, myself, <clears throat> I have opinions about all these things. Yeah. I don't share them on Twitter. If I, so for example, if there is a, say a law passed that I agree with. I won't put a woohoo or a whatever. I will just put a factual thing about the law passed. And mm -hmm. so someone may think it's a good thing or a bad thing, but I just, for myself, because you don't know the the actual complete oh, target, yeah. I'm not gonna share it there. Mm -hmm. I'm happy one on one to share with folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think one I do similar thing to jobs on Twitter. I might, like you said, post a uh, uh, somewhat more um, in personal or without that kind of opinion for, for certain I mean, in these topics, but on Facebook I might go and express opinion. Mm -hmm. which is there, yeah, it's yeah. A, to, and even in I mean Facebook, uh, Google Plus, whatever, right? Where you can you have the notion of groups as well. So even on there you can 
control. Yeah, it's really what yeah. you can control. It. Yeah. So I don't want everyone to manage web participants. I think there's a lot of us, uh, there is no division. Like, part of what Matt's getting at is there is no office for a lot of us. In right. There. Right. There is my Twitter. There is no, like, the office is I leave, physically leave a space and then uh, I can engage in different discussions. But on Twitter, there is no physically, I can't say between these hours and these hours, I represent right. my employer. And these hours and these hours, it's all me. Right. right. That won't work in social media. And so one aspect of that is your brand, in some ways, the challenge here is that your brand is really actually you. Yes. And that actually includes everything. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Including the opinions that people like or don't like, but that is in the sense of representation of, of you know, who you are as a person. So that's, I think, where some of that challenge comes because um, I think what you're struggling with is, you know, what things to share and if it's like comes back to the point. If it, if the point is don't discuss this in the office then it comes back to again the question of where you know, what's the context for which you express those opinions and what channel they use for yes. mm -hmm. Well I want to talk a little bit more about tools in a minute because yeah Twitter is probably the one where yeah, people it's do the smartest. same thing on Facebook, right? I've seen some people have two Facebook profiles. And for me that's a little odd, but that's what some people do. They say, Well I want one for Privacy settings that let you specify who's in yeah, yeah. but, but no. So I think it's okay to do it, especially with two different Twitter handles. But if you keep retweeting the thing you say in the other one, then, then people are going to follow you in both places oh, anyway. Yeah, they'll connect the dots. Right? They'll so, connect yeah. the dots. I'll use some examples here in a moment just to, to, to uh, further the discussion. Um, <laughs> it, it, it is truly my belief, and I'm guilty of it, guilty as charged, that. The social media can uh, enable this type of zealotry uh, because it's you're you're you know you're not physically present in the room when when the people are absorbing your, your content and and so that's again what I I'm, what I'm trying to do is come up with a set of guidelines for my employees and also for developers that work in our our ecosystem so to speak on on what what's the right way to go here. And so I don't have the answer. I'm actually, as I said, I'm going to start a wiki, and I'll, I'll invite you all to, uh, to comment on it. And um, I, I worry less about my own brand. I'm worrying more about the developers and their ability to attract people to collaborate and people to uh, use, <coughs> use their technology. Um, and, and you know, that's, you know, the point is, is a lot of stuff is fun. And when you are working from you know, a, a remote office a, a day in, day out, it is, it is fun to engage with your buddies. But there's also your community, your developer community. There's collaborators out there. There's people that are going to be adopting your technology. Uh, so how do you reach all of these different, different constituencies um, and, and maintain some of the fun? It's not, not necessarily this way. <laughs> I, mean, I, I just did a quick you know, a Twitter search on, on the words open source and fun. And, you know, Think about what you know. You know what your constituency is seeing when they, they see this tweet. Now, tweets are are, are short, uh, short lived. Uh, they don't have. You uh, do follow James Governor, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't. I don't know why he didn't pop up on my list. <laughs> he must not have said it in the last. Well, what was it uh, six, eight days ago? Which is actually kind of might, might be a run for him. Eight days ago. The, the and search should also be broken. Like it's the difference between the first two tweets and the last tweet, right? right? Like those first two tweets, that's not, if this is your professional, yeah. that, those two are not okay. The last one, I don't have any problem with them because that's a positive fuck rather than a negative. Because <laughs> <laughs> America, but you have, yeah. but you also, <laughs> you're, you're thinking cultural norms problem there though. I mean, yeah. I think amongst some cultural norms, right, it's, oh, that is okay. Yeah. But there are lots and lots of places where that is not okay. Right. Just yeah. because it has yeah. the word in it, yeah. period. Yeah. And you know, I can, I can cuss like a lumberjack, but I, that's, that's the one place where I really try not to, uh, I mean, I, I have a rule in the Lyft community, which is just no profanity. Yeah. My kids have to be able to like read this yeah. and think of it as coming into my house or my office. If you're coming to my house or my office, you can be a little bit more polite. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of my general rule. It works really well. I'm pretty sure they don't have their rule on the girl mailing list. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have you tried to post them to the girl mailing list lately? Uh, lately? Not lately. Well, I mean, another way to do it is if you're if you're not, if you, mm. yeah exactly <laughs> <Do you want? laughs> 
it, if you don't want to rein it in and you want someone else to worry about building your community and building up building up adoption for you, you still work for a large software company and get all this other uh, support and services and you can continue to focus on coding. But as I try to point out to most of the developers is, yes, you might work for Microsoft during the day, you might work for AOL during the day, you might work for eBay during the day, um, but when you're on this open source project, you don't have this. You don't have lawyers checking you. You don't have marketing people <coughs> wordsmithing you. You have to think like some of those functions when you're managing or leading an open source project. Um, and you know, <coughs> what prepares a developer to come out into, you know, into society, become a project leader in an open source world, and take on all these functions on behalf of the project? Uh, because in many cases, you know, they, the, the, the top leaders and contributors of the project take on the burdens of the, these functions that in their day job are handled by trained professionals. I'd say the real value of social media is taking the exports and pushing them to the front. So the whole idea is you don't have an intermediary. If you are the developer, if you're the engineer, if you are the business person, you are talking directly to your audience. Mm -hmm. And I worked, the company I'm at now is trying to get there. Um, doing an okay job, but I know the company I was at before, another large company, did a very good job. In fact, our CEO came in one point and said, addressing us, and said, how many people here are blogging? A bunch of hands went up, and he said, everybody here should be blogging. So the idea being that you don't have to be a PR person or a marketing person. Mm -hmm. If you're an engineer or a developer, you should be, you should be uh, out there talking as well. So it's all about getting direct information. Mm -hmm. So at any rate, um, getting back to the guidebook for those, those guys and gals coming out of college or just entering into the open source world for the first time, is, is to first identify their motiv motiv motivations for social engagement. And um, we all know about the fun stuff, but you're looking to validate your, your, your concepts, you're looking for potentially career growth and networking, community growth, building, building up other, getting those alphas and uh, involved in your project. Uh, getting people to adopt the code, uh, whether it be a tool for other developers or something that an end, you know, your mom's going to use to, to turn on the garage door using her iPhone. I mean, that you really have to think of adoption in a, in a very broad, broad context here. Uh, and also, or, you know, you might be doing this because you ultimately want commercial gain. So, identify your motivations up front. Why am I going to be uh, engaging heavily in social media around this project is, is important. Um, acknowledging that there are intrinsic factors that, that um, are, are quite uh, compelling and, and probably why many of us engage in social media. Uh, reducing the isolation, jump-starting jump creativity, minimizing social handicaps, uh, things that, that um, you may not be comfortable doing in a, in a room, you you're my, might be more comfortable doing it on the Ethernet. Um, and, you know, it makes you laugh. I mean, I don't know about you, but almost every day, someone, some buddy of mine sends me something that, that cheers me up for the day. So uh, it's, it's, it, laugh is, laughing is good. So uh, talk, thinking about your role in the project, uh, if you're particularly if you're a project leader, or if, you're, if, it, or if you're in a, um, a meritocracy, there might be a, a handful of committers that are viewed as the virtual leaders of the, of the, of the project. Uh, your role in that project may, may dicta, take, take the voice that you use uh, that's associated with that project. And you know it, it really changes from whether or not you're a sole developer of a project that you're doing because you're, you're pitching a scratch versus you're working for a software vendor and working on an open source code. So the whole continuum there. It's a lot more uh, tolerance for the, the zealotry and passion up here than there is down uh, in, the, in the more traditional uh, organizations. But at the end of the day, you have a responsibility to, to the project brand. And, and I think that that, you know, if I were to sum it up for, for any of the new developers that are working with us, is that you have to think about the impact that you have on your project's big brand. And, and so, you know, while I, I'm not into people censoring themselves unnecessarily, they have to think about the impact that it has on their project. Then, and, you know, we've all done it. Um, you know, I, I don't want to continue to reinforce all the <coughs> negative, negative things that happen in social media, but think about, go, as you're, you're coming here this week, you're driving into the hotel parking lot, 
and someone cuts you off. You beep your horn, you flip them off, you yell at the window, and then you walk in the lobby and the person's registering and you realize you're going to be sitting with them for the next two days and you've just really behaved badly. That's, you know, that's what happens. I mean, how do you think these tweets would be received? These are all hypothetical. The two, first two are hypothetical. The last one's real. <laughs> Thanks for that, by the way. <laughs> you know, in, a, in an instant, you send this out. You know, oh, damn, that thing went out. Whatever it is. I'll see what I actually tweeted up as I offer it. And then, you know, and then two minutes later, you're like, oh, I just said that in a room full of people. I think that was the follow on tweet. Yeah. Are you um, choosing Andy of not having a filter? <laughs> Thank God, you know, there is so much volume of tweets because they get buried very, very quickly. But, um, you and know, the well, the difference is Andy did say it in the room with context, uh, you know, for yes. us, you know, not for the whole world. Right. Uh, and, you know, it's funny because I've gone to a couple of conferences where they've actually imposed rules that you can't literally tweet, tweet someone else's, you know, verbal uh, gaffes without their permission. Oh. Uh, it's a little, it's a little overbearing, but you, you know you have you have to remember that this stuff can can filter out quite rapidly. Uh, so so with that, what I wanted to ask the room because um, what I, I've seen a lot of uh, changes in the last couple of years. And I mean, I was using IRC ages ago. I don't use it at all now. I'm not a developer though, and I know a lot of my developers use IRC. I'm astounded at how many developers are using Twitter um, and, and actively with regard to their projects and talking about releases and patches and all kinds of stuff. It really is remarkable, but I, if, I, if I look at it as a marketeer, it's the interface. It's that 100, it's like coding, you know, you, you're scripting 140 characters. Um, I, I don't see developers using um, using Facebook at all in the context of their their work. Um, socially, yes, but not in the context of work. LinkedIn more for professional development. <coughs> Google Plus. Does anyone get in traction with Google Plus? Yes. Google Plus. I would argue that LinkedIn. Tim, right? I would argue that LinkedIn, especially in the LinkedIn groups, are utter crap. Yes. Because, mm -hmm. yes. because they're privately in the room. Because, <laughs> absolutely. Because, well, actually, I don't mind if people say yeah, that. Andy, uh, because. <laughs> the group managers yes. don't spend enough time moderating them, and you just end up, they all become job spam. Yeah. 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 It's a real shame, because they oh, could be much, much better. Oh, okay. um, and now they've made it worse with these thumbs up uh, yeah, things and, that and, they just added in the last week. Yeah, and then everyone's encouraged to make all their groups public by default, instead of having some kind of, you know, filter. I think Google Groups is, is, is pretty powerful. I mean, you can argue that that's forums or mailing lists, which you don't have listed there. Um, forums. Forums. Yeah, You've got forums, but mailing lists are really important still. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think G plus is basically only like it's a waste. I mean, I, Insular. it's too, I I've got Facebook for my I've got Facebook for my personal stuff. I've got Twitter for my public stuff. G plus, there's not enough of a social graph in there yet that I really care about but, it. But you're the O'Reilly kind of orbit. Exactly. The O'Reilly guys. The O'Reilly guys are really heavy on Google Plus, so if you hang with those guys, like that's where you Maybe that's they, why they, they never asked me to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> All the open source journalists and, and analysts are, are, are heavy in G plus. It's really heavy on Linux developers, I've noticed. Mm -hmm. But part of the problem with that, what you were talking about with LinkedIn, is that, you know, Every year, it seems like there's one more social network or one more thing to pay attention to. Like we're we're trying to pay attention to LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus and everything, forums and mailing lists. And at some point, there's a breaking point where you just can't spread your attention to all the forums, and, and you need to make a choice what you're going to kill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's hard to kill LinkedIn because the executive folks look at that and, well, I'm on LinkedIn, that's yeah. important. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Is that Stack Overflow as well? One we came up oh, right. today, I think that's, that's an important point. one which that I monitor for, for our stuff. So. Yeah. And I would say Facebook is important to OSS devs when I talk to them personally. Yeah. Like, there's some that I know personally, and mm -hmm. they're there, and now I have a greater connection into that group. Like, oh, Paolo had a baby. Congratulations, Paolo, that's awesome, right? Yeah. But yeah. it's not for talking code. But it's for maintaining that social network. And I, and I think the mistake that lots of enterprises are making is, oh, we must have a brand, I must have a page for us enterprise software on Facebook. Mm -hmm. you know, what does happens. it mean if yeah. I like 
what's her in queue of something. <laughs> yeah, it seems to work for cons- B2C, consumer yeah. brand. I mean, it's really interesting. It, so it depends on the B2C brand. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 but it's because they Sorry. want access to your social graph. They yep. can't get it unless you interact but with they, it. But they did do anything with it then, do they? Some, some companies. So I, I think, so I think they want to. So I know from when I'm at, you know, at, at JP Morgan that they, that they want to do a bit of targeting, acquisition, all those things. And so somewhere in the back of the mind it is, you know, they know they've heard that, you know, we can get the, you know, social graph and do something with it sometime, right? And, and so that's part of the reason why they want to get on. Well, it's like what Steve was saying, you collect all the data you can, then you do something with it later on once you think how to use it. Yeah. But, all right, so let's, like, you know, take, take your, your large corporation hats off for a moment and your data hats off. And you got a, a new developer who says, I just started this way cool open source project and I want to get some alphas. GitHub. Oh, yeah, GitHub, exactly, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, huh? it's a lot of noise. On, I mean, you can't just put a repo up on GitHub. And you're right. That would be, but you have to be on GitHub. Well, if you don't or, have a repo, but it's not the. You're right. Yeah. It's the technology and project specific, unfortunately. And Tomeko is not here, but because even, GitHub is not a good. Even with GitHub, if you're doing certain open source projects, you're not being on GitHub will be worse. You have to be on Bitbucket, you know, mm-hmm. because there's different families, mm-hmm. cultures, yeah, communities. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you just have to be aware. of the hardest part about new open source developers is, is making them listen and be aware of what their community is. Well, and which of these toys yeah. that they happen to communicate with, yeah. right? Um, right? So, you know, this particular project is all IRC all the time. That one's yeah. all mailing list all the time. This one over here actually does use Google Plus, you know, and, and, yeah. if, and if you're a typical developer, you might have 50 odd My open source apps right. that are part of your app. Mm-hmm. So you have to know where all 50 live. And monitor all 50. I have to be on all of these. Mm-hmm. I have to monitor all of them because of the communities that I'm involved in are everywhere. Mm-hmm. So, are you guys, because you're on so many channels, are you using an aggregator like Hootsuite or anything like that? I, I, I try to, but it. Twitter made it hard and other things, so now I just have a 30 inch monitor. I refer you to my previous comments on that. No, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> I have a monitor to the left that is my social monitor. The 30 inch monitor in front of me is my work monitor. Then I have three laptops that are part of different work social, you know, because I don't want to mix, you know, because of the legal reasons. I can't mix technologies from one laptop to the other. So, man, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm up to two, two screens myself. I, I just switched to Mac, and I, I can honestly say I hate it. <laughs> so, I have a broken PC. You say that. You, say, you know what today is? Ooh. How can you? <laughs> no, no. I would be happy to tell anyone that I think publicly that I hate it uh, for the for simple reason. I think you just did. But I digress. <laughs> for a simple reason that as a business professional, it did not add a single ounce of, of productivity enhancement to my life. Nothing. You know, I, I use social media. I use browsers. I use mail. You know, basic tools. It didn't change my life at all. I'd just like to add more to the show, please. More fuel to the fire about this fragmented uh, thing. So just, so it's just—it's so, just, it's so tough now. So for for, for um, Sputnik, we had um, we've got forums, and then we've got my blog where a lot of comments come in, and then we got people on Twitter talking about it, and then one of the cosmonauts saying, "Hey, you really got to be on G plus because that's really where a lot of us are." Mm-hmm. And then we also have an yeah, we have an internal one which is Chatter, so you got to push for that as well, and it just you're. And you have work to do too. And you're trying to monitor all this stuff, reply to people, and they're just coming from all different areas, and it's just. So I mean, it's so more than a full time yeah, job. That, that, I mean, at what point does this right breadth of, of tools and channels become counterproductive? Yeah. So because I, I, you're spending so much time in them and not coding. Right. So I, I, I think that's, an actual, that's actually an issue right there that you just inadvertently pointed out. You said, and then does this work as well? Yeah. Right. There's no mm-hmm. separation, the two are work. No, I mean, it's internal, is what I meant. It's a chatter is an internal one. And it's, I would love to have a, so I'm, my, my Twitter feed is lot linked to my Facebook, which is linked to LinkedIn, although I think LinkedIn, they're going to cut it. Twitter, if they have it already, but yeah. um, yeah. the, um, uh, I would love a, a link to post it directly to chatter as well. Uh, but there's only a plugin for that. Yeah. So. Oh, what, 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 so now we need what, what we need. What? Okay. What we need here in this room is someone to take on the role of, of writing an aggregator that rocks. <laughs> <laughs> all of 
they are, but the because problem is they're they're mm -hmm. all like well, the old AOL, and that is the biggest problem. Here. That's the why we all have a problem is it's all closed. Yeah. Maybe. And, oh, that's and, and that's the there yeah. is no fix to it. That's yeah. right. the, each one of those companies is What's fairly yeah. shitty. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And how they do this, they are they are anti they are anti. Like, 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 Maybe we should instead agree in this room to abandon one every year. <laughs> yeah. 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 Put them off the island. Yeah. 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 So see, you know, I, I thought I was coming here and I was going to get all the right answers, and my worst fears have been confirmed. So I'll wrap it up now. So you guys are the example. You're you're senior, you know, experienced open source professionals. Uh, so you really, you, you are the example, and I'm going to be paying some of you guys to uh, and, and gals. Um, to to talk more about this issue, about how we uh, mentor and and set an example for all. It astounds me. I've been in I've been in high tech for 20 years. I've been open source for 10. It astounds me how many people are coming into the open source world and are absolutely clueless about the culture and absolutely clueless about how to engage. So I, we've got to help. We've got to help find a way to. But that tells you a lot about higher education, though. They have no boundaries whatsoever. Right. They're socially stunted. They are. No, they're socially okay. No, oh. they're socially. We, okay, is, we sound like it, those kind of statements sound like. You know, well, back on. in the day, I'll tell you what. Yeah. It, there's a yeah, different yeah, way of socially. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Get off my lawn. All right, so we're good. Yeah. So anyway, I will be reaching out to you all, all to, to help you on this because I think I think we have a lot to share and we can continue to be excellent. I like that. Damn right. Awesome.